Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. This video might seem a little bit weird to you if you're not a fan of Mystery Science Theater 3000, but as a fan of bad movies, I grew up with MST3K. So when the show made a return last year, I decided to make my own Tom Servo. Did somebody say my name? Yeah, I was just telling the people at home how I decided to make you after MST3K came back last year. It took you long enough. Your voice doesn't sound right. Let's see if we can fix that. How's that? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, it's better, but it's not quite right. Then again, I could sit here and tweak this thing all day and never get it perfect. Besides, the voice changed several times on the show, so it really doesn't matter that much. You always were one to take the easy way out. Well, I just don't really see how it matters. Oh, we got making time! The parts for this build were really hard to find. Some of the parts haven't been made since the late 80s to early 90s. I tried sourcing the parts myself, but finally gave up and just ordered a kit. There's a link to the kit I ordered in the description. This video is brought to you by Ertl. Come on, it was a bit more complicated than a model car. In addition to the kit, you'll also need some primer, some white paint, and to get the colors just right, I used Tester's Silver and Tester's Red, and I also used some black acrylic paint for the inside of Servo's mouth. I'll also include the exact colors I used from testers in the description below. I started with Tom's head. There are a few things I need to mention about the snack dispenser. It's still being made, but it's actually changed in the last few years. This is both a good thing and a bad thing. The good change is that the globe screws off now. It knows when it's not wanted. With the older model, you had to cut the globe off and there was a big risk of damaging it. The bad change is now the seam of the globe is vertical instead of horizontal, so if you're a stickler for details when making props, that might bother you. Oh, so you're saying I'm not screen accurate? I disassembled all of the pieces, starting with the lid and the globe. Then I took off the bottom. It just twists off. Then I took off the top part of the mouth. It's a beak, actually. Is a beak not a mouth? I don't know. Google it. The bottom of the mouth is held in place by a little spring. Don't lose the spring, you'll need it later. Ah, uh, who needs stupid springs? Don't say that, we don't want that crazy coily character showing up. With the bottom part of the mouth, you'll need to remove the little ah! plastic wheel. I used a Dremel with a cutoff wheel. I didn't even try to cut it flush because I didn't want to risk scratching it. So I used a sanding bit to remove the excess and smooth out the edges. Be sure to make really light passes here because the plastic melts really easily. Ha! First link when I search for beak, it says beak, a horny projecting mouth of a bird. Well, I stand corrected. Now, still working with the bottom portion of the mouth, you'll need to drill a small hole on this little fin piece. It doesn't really matter what size bit you use, this hole is where the wire goes that will allow Tom's mouth to move. You may regret this later. Hey! You'll also need to drill a small hole on the inside of the dispenser right above the slot. This hole needs to fit the screw on the eyelet that comes with the kit, so use a bit that's just slightly smaller than that screw. This part can be a bit tricky. I used a pair of needle nose pliers that were curved on the end to hold the eyelet and screw it in place. This will be used to run the wire through so you can control the mouth. This may be one of the most frustrating parts of the entire build. It took me several tries to get this, so if you're having trouble with it, just, just keep practicing and eventually you'll get it. Nice take there, Steve. A stutter and a mouse click. Editing. Try some. This is only like my 10th video. I still kind of suck at this. Now it's time to prep the money lever bank. There should already be small indentations where the screw holes need to be, but if not, just use the holes on the engine block as a reference. There should be screws with the kit for this part, so use an appropriate bit for making the screw holes. You'll also need to make two screw holes on each side of the barrel for attaching the shoulder pieces. Now you'll need to drill out the holes to install the Lazy Susan. This is how the head mechanism works. There should be indentations indicating how it's installed. Lazy Susan is insulting to women named Susan. I say we change it to Lazy Steve. Hey! Come on, you started this project in November.
After prepping the money lever bank, you'll need to sand all of the white plastic pieces. You'll also need to sand all of the pieces of the head and mouth, except the globe of course. You just need to scuff them up a bit so the primer and paint will stick better. Did you really have to tell them not to sand the globe? I guarantee you if I didn't, some numbnut would do it and I'd hear about it in the comments. With all of the pieces sanded, I went ahead and sprayed them all with a coat of white primer. After the primer dried, I applied several coats of the appropriate paints to each of the pieces. I went a little heavy on the paint on some of the pieces and had runs that I had to fix. It's best to do several light coats. Your wife is going to be pissed when she sees that you've ruined the buy one get one section of the sales paper. While the paint was drying, I trimmed the excess material from the shoulder pieces and the trains that go on Tom's hover skirt. Herber skirt? When the painted pieces had dried, I masked the top portion of the mouth and sprayed it with red, and then I masked the main part of the engine block and sprayed the top with silver. I painted the inside of the mouth with black acrylic. Then it's time for final assembly. I screwed the Lazy Susan to the top of the barrel. <laughs> you said screwed the Lazy Susan. Tom, we need to keep this family friendly. You don't have to attach the head to the top. It's held on by the rod that will be inserted later. That's what she said. Next, you need to run the wire through the eyelet we installed earlier, and then through the slot and into the hole on the lower mouthpiece. Do what with the slot? Tom, seriously. I tied a knot in the wire and then secured it with a dab of hot glue to keep it from coming untied. When the glue dries, reassemble the bottom mouthpiece and attach the spring. Then test to make sure it works. You may need to turn the eyelet a bit so the mouth operates smoothly. Ah, rah, rah, rah. Make sure you're satisfied with the mouthpiece, because this next step will make it difficult to make adjustments. You need to take the PVC piece that's shaped like a T and run the wire through it. Then apply a generous amount of hot glue to the edges of the top portion of the T. Insert it into the bottom of the head and then apply more glue to the bottom part of the T. While the glue is cooling, cut a hole in the bowl that's just big enough for the PVC control rod to fit through snugly. I used a Forstner bit, but you could easily do this with an X-Acto knife. Try to center the hole the best you can. To attach the arms, I installed the screws from the inside and put a little bit of paint on the tips of the screws to help with marking and aligning the holes in the arm pieces. Now you need to drill the holes in the arm pieces. Be careful not to go too deep. That's what she said. Alright, let's go. We have to try to keep this family friendly. YouTube has been demonetizing people's channels for bad language and that kind of humor. You aren't making any money with this channel anyway. You only upload a video once every six months or so. Well, yeah, I had big plans, but every now and then life gets in the way. Besides, you're one to talk about crude humor. The name of your channel originally was Got Wood. The name of your show is just a silly dick joke. Well, yeah, that's one of the reasons I changed it. That and like three other people had the same silly dick joke idea. All right, all right, can we just finish this? I've got things to do. Well, do you think you can behave yourself in the theater for the rest of the video? Yeah, yeah, I agree. You've made your point. We need to be more family friendly. But if this video makes any money, I want my cut. Okay, well let's try this again. Sorry folks. Like the paint on the tip of the screws, I use the same method to transfer marks from the holes in the arm pieces to help with alignment of the shoulder pieces. With the pieces marked and drilled, I attached the shoulder and arm pieces to the sides of the barrel, and then attached the engine block to the front of the barrel. To attach the hover skirt, I needed to drill holes in the bottom of the barrel and the bowl. There were no marks for this, so I turned on the flashlight on my phone and put it in the barrel. With the lights off and the bowl on top of the barrel, I was able to mark the perimeter of the hole from the barrel onto the bowl. 
I made six screw holes about a quarter of an inch outside the perimeter of the circle. Then I attached the bowl to the barrel. This video is full of continuity errors. You're wearing a different shirt. I'm not Adam Savage and this is not a one day build. I don't know if I should be seeing this. I have no head. It's just kind of morbid. To assemble the puppeteering rod, you need to run the wire through the rod and then insert the rod into the T-piece in the head. There should already be holes in the T-piece. Use a drill to mark holes in the rod and then remove the rod and drill out the holes. Reinsert the rod into the head assembly, but don't permanently attach it yet. Now place the head assembly on the body and flip it over. While holding the head securely in place, mark where the rod exits the hole in the bowl. Remove the rod and mark a second line a little more than half an inch past the line that you just drew. Then cut the pipe at the second line. Take the shorter piece of PVC pipe with the attached coupler and insert the large rod. Oh, come on! Use the hole in the coupler to mark and drill holes in the large rod. Run the wire through the large rod and insert it into the T-piece in the bottom of the head. Attach it with a bolt and nut. Insert the head and rod assembly into the body and then use a nut and bolt to attach the smaller rod and coupler to the larger rod. If you have trouble getting it in the hole like I did, flip it over and try the other hole. At least take me to dinner first! Oh, okay, I admit I did that one on purpose. Now cut the wire to length and tie it to the key ring that was provided. Don't cut off too much. You can always come back and make adjustments once you try them out and get a feel for how much wire you need. Now take the trains and space them evenly around the hover skirt. I made the mistake of using hot glue to try to attach them. Do not use hot glue. These pieces were heat formed and heat will deform them. Oh, it's melting, it's melting, it's melting, it's melting, it's melting, it's melting, no, 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 no. F Once I mangled one up a bit, I switched to modeling cement, which worked much better. When you're finished with the hover skirt, attach the hands to the springs. You can just screw them on. Now attach the hands and springs to the shoulders using the same method. Boing, 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 boing. To finish off your wise cracking robot friend, just screw the globe and lid onto the head. Ah, oh, what a handsome guy. So I hope you guys like that video even if you're not fans of Mystery Science Theater 3000. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, what he said. <laughs>